Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. <laughs> Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good morning. So, yesterday I posted um, the latest announcement from the FDA. Uh, you guys are wonderful. It had 1,111 shares. Um, which is probably the most shares I've ever had on one particular post. So thank you very much and a whole bunch of comments. Uh, and the first comment that I saw was from Patty Bernard, who's in Ohio. And she said, a friend's puppy is now fighting for its life because it was given next guard, heart guard, and a bunch of vaccines all in one visit. That is so common. So veterinarians get free samples to hand out to uh, new puppy and kitten owners um, in the hopes that once you get that free sample, you as the pet owner go, oh, that worked really well, I really liked it, and I'll just keep buying it. So, you know, it's, it's a win-win for the drug company and for the veterinarian because the drug company is selling more drugs, the veterinarian is pushing it, but the veterinarian gets to give you that free sample so they look like the good guy. Um, and NexGuard and HeartGuard are made by the same company, so they come together in a puppy pack. You get a little box that has both of those things in there. And um, somebody else posted on there that she's a vet tech and it kills her because she watches me and feeds a whole food diet to her pets. Uh, it kills her every time she has to hand out those products, uh, the isoxazolium products, to a client and said that the veterinarian has never once warned the pet owner about the potential side effects. Now, how many pet owners follow FDA.gov for recalls or statements about products that are given to their pets? I can tell you it's probably 0.00001% of pet owners because unless there's someone who is incredibly... Um, concerned, like most of us, about the chemicals that are being put in our animals. Uh, I mean, frankly, how many of you question what your doctor prescribes for you? Well, I'm preaching to the choir right now because probably a lot of you do. But how many people blindly have faith in whatever their doctor prescribes for them? Um, I mean, my parents used to, with my dad, he was on 30-some pills a day. And so before Hugh and I got involved in my dad's care, it was, oh, well, the doctor said we should take this. And once we were involved, every time my mom came home with a new script, I was doing my research. If it wasn't something I was familiar with, but there's a lot of human medicines that we don't use in veterinary medicine, so a lot of them I'm not familiar with, but I would instantly go look up on one of the drug websites, what are the interactions, what are the side effects, and there were many times that we found he was being prescribed things that had bad interactions with other things that he was taking, and there were many times when I said, no, we are not giving this to him, we are not going to use this, look at the side effects of this, look at the percentage of side effects, 40% of people have hallucinations and uh, nightmares on this drug, 
No, he already had hallucinations and nightmares. We didn't need to add to that. So it becomes our responsibility to question what is being given to us and to our animals. Um, yeah, real nice of the FDA to put out this. And they did not mention our research study that was done, uh, which um, has been approved for publication. Those of you who donated to that, if you'll remember, it was like, uh, God, a year and a half ago, um, at least a year ago. Uh, but we're getting close. Um, so hopefully we'll we'll have a link to that. But we've talked to FDA about it, and they still didn't mention it in here at all. The one good thing that they did do is give the names of the companies that make them. Merck makes Provecto, Alanco makes Cordelio, Boringer uh, Ingelheim is Nexgard, and Zoetis is Semperica and Revolution Plus. Um, or you can report directly to the FDA and they give a link to that. It's not that easy to do. My recommendation, if you have an animal that has a uh, reaction or problem to these drugs, um, I would contact both. And interestingly, Patty Bernard with the puppy friend's puppy that was given neck guard, heart guard, and vaccines all on the same day and is now uh, on death's doorstep. The veterinarian has no idea what could possibly be wrong. That's the problem. Everyone's in denial about what these drugs cause. And FDA was nice enough to put in here... Um, although... Most dogs and cats haven't had neurologic uh, adverse reactions, including um, uh, seizures may occur in animals without a prior history. And it says isoxazolium products have been associated with neurologic adverse reactions, including muscle tremors, ataxia, and seizures in some dogs and cats. What they fail to mention, liver failure, kidney failure, cancer, bleeding to death pancreatitis. There are so many things that can happen to these animals. There are so many things that they are dying from. And yet the veterinarians and the drug companies will say, oh no, couldn't possibly be from our drug. It was the vaccine that was given at the same time. It was food that you fed. They will blame everything else. They will blame you as the pet owner for doing something wrong or not doing something that they considered should have been done. So Hugh's over there shaking his head. So I, he's seeing comments. I'm I'm on the FDA page. So, um, you know, the so the FDA is alerting pet owners and veterinarians of the potential for neurologic adverse events in dogs and cats when treated with these drugs. Now, here's the thing: if I wasn't who I am and I didn't do what I do, if I was just a traditional veterinarian, I'd never see this. I guarantee you. 95% of the veterinarians don't see this FDA warning. It's not sent to us. I have not received an email from the FDA. I have not received a written letter from the FDA. Nobody sees this. Uh, it's the same thing with um, ProHeart, injectable heartworm preventative, the 6-month and the 12-month. You are supposed to be told of the potential side effects. Oh yeah, death, liver failure, seizures, muscle tremors, weakness. You're supposed to be warned of that. And your veterinarian is supposed to look at the health of your animal and decide whether your animal is healthy enough to get that. It's not a one size fits all. That injection is not recommended for senior pets or any pets with liver problems. Well, unless you have blood work done on your pet and know that you have perfect liver enzymes before you give the injection, how would you know? So what happens, you go in for the, the routine annual visit and maybe you have blood work drawn, but you get those results tomorrow or the next day or the next week. The injection was already given. Now what? Oh yeah, there's no antidote. There are no antidotes for these horrendous drugs that are given to our animals. If they have a side effect or a reaction or they have seizures, it could, could result in death, or it could be a lifelong problem. We have thousands of dogs that are on lifelong phenobarbital, uh, Keppra, zonisamide for seizures that were caused by these drugs. And I have reviewed many records with animals that are having seizures, 
where these drugs are contraindicated to be given to a pet with seizures, and yet in the records, the veterinarian is dispensing phenobarbital and Nexgard in the same visit. Have they not read the side effects? Have they not read the warnings? Apparently not. So it's up to us to spread the word. So I appreciate all of you doing that. Um, and uh, really kind of support and promote the pages uh, on Facebook. Uh, does Brevecto kill dogs? Does Nexgard harm dogs? Uh, I'm sure there's one for Cordelia and some Parica as well. Um, uh, there's a lot of good information on those pages. And if you have a pet who has been harmed, per particularly on the Does Brevecto Kill Dogs page, uh, they have a ton of files up top uh, with um, treatments and detoxes that people have tried, people are using, uh, some more effective than others. But frankly, if you have an animal that has been harmed by these drugs, one, Report, report, report. Call the FDA, call the drug company. I don't care how long it's been. If it happened two years ago, call them and report it, even if you suspect it, because um, your veterinarian will not. And your veterinarian doesn't want to be held responsible for giving something that harmed your pet. So that's one of the reasons. I mean, none of us, none of us went to school to try to harm animals. Um, and, you know, this is, this is not about... Um, veterinarians being in it only for the money it's not you know this is veterinarians not having the time or not taking the time to really read the drug insert this is listening to your salesman who comes in or sales rep i shouldn't say man your sales rep who comes in and tells you it's the greatest thing since sliced bread it's going to solve all your problems uh, you'll never see pets with lyme disease again which is wrong because by the way the fleas and ticks have to bite your animal in order to ingest the chemical to kill them. So, not preventing those sorts of things, even though they would like us to think they are. So, there is a blog on my website, which has been posted probably, the, the two most popular blogs on my website are How to Make Pup Loaf and Natural Flea and Tick Prevention. It's been posted and shared a million times, uh, but, if you haven't seen it, and there's probably some of you saying, well, you know, this is the only thing that works. I live in a high-tick area. The fleas are just killer. You know, what do I do? What do I do? Go to my website. Find the, uh, in the search in the little magnifying glass on the top right. Type in natural flea and tick. You want to go to the second one that comes up, which is natural flea and tick revisited. It's more recent, and the links in there are all good. Uh, but in order to, to take care of flea and tick problems, it's going to require multimodal therapy. It is not a one and done with a, here, here's a quick pill that's going to fix everything because that might really break everything, you know, including your pet's life. Uh, you've got to treat the environment. You've got to treat the pets. This is, this is not a one and done. This is, uh, you know, constantly working at keeping the environment good and keeping their immune system good so that you don't have overwhelming problems. Um, and frankly, the animals that are going to have the most problems are those that are the weakest and have the weakest immune system. So we have clients that have, you know, 8, 10, 12 cats, and they'll get a huge flea infestation. They'll bring the cats in, and the healthy, robust young cats, one or two fleas. The old, decrepit cats in kidney failure who have horrible immune systems will be loaded, thousands of fleas. So, you know, they, parasites prey on the weak. And so keeping your pets healthy with a good diet, with a strong immune system, um, is going to go a long way to preventing infestations. Okay. That's my soapbox for today. Everybody have a wonderful day. I got to work on my pain class some more. Yesterday, it was painful. Yesterday, I was doing a whole bunch of neurology, which... But you're so close. I'm so close. I got three hours left. Three out of 40. Three left. I'm on horses now, so let's see what I can learn about horses. Uh, supporters, we're going to plan on Friday night. I'll post uh, something. Thank you.